Yeah, okay. I paused already, so hold on instead. We're good, go. Okay. This demonstration is regarding the Phillips monitor. Every critical care transport patient gets placed on cardiac monitoring to include pulse oximetry as well as EKG and blood pressure readings. If need be, we can do and monitor CO2 waveforms as well as invasive line arterial monitoring. For this demonstration, we are not going to go through the CO2 or the invasive line monitoring, but let's start with the basics. First off, you have a control knob here. You also have an hourglass blinking in the top right hand corner. With this hourglass blinking, that means that this has passed its mandatory tests for the shift and that is fully, fun fully functional and operational. If there was a problem indicated with any of the user tests, there would be a red X through the center of it indicating that you need to go to Biomed and have it switched out because the equipment is not reliable. So we will turn our selector knob to on and the screen comes up. Now in the side pocket here you have all the cables needed for EKG monitoring, non-invasive blood pressure monitoring, as well as pulse oximetry. In the back part of the monitor, there are packages of electrodes. So you would simply open up the electrodes and then attach each one to one ear to a lead. This monitor does have in case you need to refer to your placement of leads, it is there for you. Okay. The monitor automatically defaults to lead two, lead one, and a V lead. Okay, a V1. The actual tracing will come up in the green. And when you take the pulse oximeter and put that on the patient's finger, you'll come up with the SPO2 reading. When you have a screen that you want to capture, you go over to the right hand side and you push on the button underneath the monitor to print your EKG strip. All patients require at least one six second EKG strip to stop the print. You push it again. Now, if you wanted to do a 12 lead EKG, which is a standard protocol for anybody having chest pain, or shortness of breath. You have the additional limb leads and core leads and they are labeled your V leads. So you have you already put V2, V1 on so you have V2, V3, V4, V5 and V6 and they will plug into your monitor. You simply line up the colors if you can see yellow and yellow blue, green, green, blue, blue and this simply gets plugged in. Okay. If you have to defibrillate a patient, you would pull out your patient pads, defibrillation pads. This is for infant. It's located in the green and it tells you less than 10 kilograms, whereas the red package is for adult and child and the child has to be greater than 10 kilos. Okay. All right, this connector that's inside the package gets connected right into the gray. You can see the, this gray matches. The connector in there is black and it just simply plugs in. It's only one way because the top part of it is rounded. Once you plug into this, you would be able to just go to your adult dose. It'll tell you, like there was a message that said, to connect the pads, you connect the pads, and then you'd be able to go through hitting your charge and delivering your shock. Conversely, if you wanted to pace a patient or synchronize cardiovert a patient, you have those options as well, simply by going through, backing your menu up, selecting your desired jewel setting that you want it to cardiovert at, and then you would sync. You'd hit the sync button to make sure that you have your R waves flagged. And then you would go ahead and start 
viewing an EKG with R waves flagged, you'd be able to charge and then deliver the synchronized cardioversion. Okay, I hope that's a nice brief interview to get you guys going. For any further questions, please refer to one of the SCTU nurses or refer to the manual that is also in the crew room of SCTU-1. Thanks.